I'm so looking forward to getting into the game and just seeing exactly how these players are going to navigate this type of pressure. And already, as we were talking about it, here comes that Torkoal and that Venusaur, as well as an Incineroar and that Dusclops coming out from Eduardo. So David, in this position, has already kind of put on the pressure, recognizing that there isn't really a necessary need to kind of preserve the Torkoal because there isn't really weather control on the side of Eduardo. Not having that weather control does mean that Torkoal is going to be in the driving seat. And obviously, weather control can come in numerous forms, but not having an easy way to do it with a switch is certainly an interesting one. Dusclops as well has to be careful about the Trick Room. It's really easy to say, well, I still want Trick Room. I still want to be able to set up. But do you want to do that in the face of the Torkoal? It's a tough decision to make. Now, Torkoal goes for the eruption after we do see the fake out come out from Incineroar into the Venusaur. So Venusaur is not going to be super speedy this time around. And in fact, we're going to see the speed flipped on its head as we see that Dusclops go for that Trick Room. Dusclops decides, I still need Trick Room. Maybe the, the rest of the team does rely that heavily on Trick Room. And, and that means this Torkoal is going to be in a great position. It does kind of take Venusaur out of the game while Chlorophyll's active, uh, just because it's going to be moving uh, much, much later. The Sun being up, obviously being paired with an Incineroar does give some options there. Maybe you could land a, a big Flare Blitz on this Venusaur uh, and go from there. So certainly a lot of decisions to be made uh, over the next couple of turns. But Trick Room is up. That could be absolutely vital for Eduardo. And we have to see if, if David can just play comfortably within that Trick Room. I think so with a Torkoal, but Eduardo mm. must have a game plan for this one. Well, we are going to see a switch out here. Venusaur not going to be able to do nearly as much in the face of this Trick Room. So, hey, let's get Porygon 2 out onto the field who, you know, will be able to do some things within the Trick Room itself or even reverse it with a potential Trick Room of its own. But Eduardo is going full force here. There's there's really no reason not to. You've got Torkoal and Trick Room. Uh, you are the Pokemon. Your partner wasn't in the best position. So you really want a big turn. You want a turn where you're going to be getting some knockouts and, and Dynamaxing the Torkoal. Uh, certainly one way to, to try and land as much of that as possible. Ooh, well, Pain Split coming out from Dusclops here is going to bring that Porygon to just a little bit lower. But as that Torkoal is in its Dynamax form now, Wow, that's going to be a lot of damage onto the Dusclops. But Incineroar smartly going for that parting shot to be able to lower the attack and that special attack of that Torkoal, most notably that special attack, and will be going back into its Pokeball for something in the back. Being able to get that Incineroar out, save a fake out for later, could be absolutely huge. Uh, and that's something that he could use to buy some time, maybe when Torkoal isn't Dynamaxed anymore, uh, or if there's a potential for the Trick Room to be reversed. Lots of lots of options coming through there. And a nice little reposition there to the Tapu Fini as well. I think the Tapu Fini is obviously going to take hits from the Torkoal a lot better, uh, and that's going to be important for kind of withstanding the next couple turns. Right. You also have access to super effective attacks against this Torkoal. Even though that the sun is up, you can still a, you know, do a lot of damage and try to kind of force this Torkoal into a position where it's not affecting you nearly as much. But Tapu Fini also going to be able to tank quite a few hits coming out from that Torkoal. Well, one of the big things with Torkoal as well is taking away its health. And, and if you do that slowly, you do that quickly, it doesn't really matter. Every bit of damage you get down is going to be very, very important. And a pain split is going to be a really good way to do that. Absolutely. Torkoal still going to fire back, though, with another Max Flare. This time, though, Dusclops doesn't get nearly as low as it did before, as a tri-attack coming out from Porygon 2 is going to go into the Tapu Fini. Crits, oh, but no status condition. Well, the, the Tapu Fini comes in and, and really kind of takes care of itself, uh, which is something that's really good for it. And, Eduardo mm -hmm. is very confident in the Tapu Fini here, just saying, you know what, I don't really care what you throw at me. you got two special attackers, so with that in mind, it's time to just set up a Calm Mind and make your damage output even lower in the next couple turns. Yeah, I think that's a really great setup for Tapu Fini, just being able to get that Calm Mind and get that special attack boosted. Then you're able to dish out some damage, and especially when you know that you're looking at a po po Pokemon like Porygon 2 that has access to a move like Recover, Porygon 2 is definitely a huge threat on the field that you've got to get rid of, or else it could just recover away all of that damage. Well, Dusclops is going to be doing its best to keep itself on the field uh, with some really nice pain splits. and. We see kind of the, the lasting impact of that parting shot on the Torkoal now. It's just not enough anymore. No, it's not. And we will see that Porygon 2 fire back with yet another try attack. 
Not a crit this time around, but Tapu Fini is able to fire back with a Moonblast into that Porygon 2. But Porygon 2 still hangs on! Porygon 2 is getting a special attack lower though, so that boost it got on the way in isn't going to be sticking around much longer. And this Tapu Fini still feeling pretty good about its ability to, to take hits. Even better for Tapu Fini now though. The Torkoal doesn't have its Dynamax anymore, so its damage output is lower. Of course, Dusclops is still going to be in a, an interesting position with a very, very low health, and obviously limited on, on how much it can get out of Pain Split every single time. Right. Maybe still a nice target with the Torkoal there for the Pain Split, but mm -hmm. you're not recovering nearly as much health now, now that it's out of that Dynamax form. We will see, you know, maybe some damage to clean up this Porygon too, but I still worry about the recover, so... Let's see how Eduardo decides to play around these next couple of turns. Yeah, Eduardo's been playing it really, really wisely, I think. Uh, setting up, putting a lot in on his Tapu Fini, and it forces this very uh, necessary switch from David into the Venusaur. Ooh, well, Venusaur on the way in is going to be taking quite a bit of damage here. And there's that recover coming out from Porygon 2. So even though it was at low health, that health is going to be regained and restored. So this Moonblast here, not going to be enough to be able to pick up the knockout. No, nowhere near recover. Easily leaving uh, Porygon 2 at such a healthy amount. It's able to, to take those very, very well. Uh, but it's another turn where the damage is limited from one side and Trick Room's over now. Uh, this Venusaur probably feeling pretty good. Yes, the sun is down, uh, which could be annoying, but Torkoal was saved and Torkoal is able to, to potentially switch back in a little bit later on. Or even now, I mean, why not? Why rule out the immediate switch to Torkoal? Right, Porygon 2 could just switch out here and then bring back in the sun when that Torkoal comes back out onto the field. And with that Chlorophyll ability from Venusaur, that Venusaur is going to be moving mighty fast on the field. So Eduardo has to play around this really carefully. No, it, There's no Incineroar right now on the field to be able to go for that fake out. Incineroar is something that is going to be really good for swinging momentum around, but a, a lot really now relies on keeping this Tapu Fini safe. And mm -hmm. that's quite tough to do in the face of the Venusaur. So these switches could get a little bit obvious and maybe a little bit predictable. Uh, and if David can capitalize on those, he's going to be in, in a really good position. Uh, getting the attack drops, really not what Incineroar wants to do on these turns. No, that's for sure. Incineroar is going to, uh, well, there's the Leaf Storm from Venusaur that's going to be going into the Protect from Tapu Fini, and this is a perfect opportunity now for David to hit that Recover again for Porygon 2 and really keep Porygon 2 safe on the field. What I think is quite interesting here is Incineroar is coming in to obviously protect the Tapu Fini. It is going to be able to do that very easily for a turn with Fake Out, but at the same time, then it's going to have to start doing it with like Flare Blitzes, um, and I think the, the owners may actually end up being on Tabu Fini to, to land some damage in there. Leave this Porygon 2. The Porygon 2 is not really worrying you now. Uh, particularly not your Tabu Fini. You've, of course, got that boost from the Calm Mind earlier in the Special Defense. So you got rid of its, its boost on your own side through the drop earlier as well. So this Porygon 2 is very manageable. And it looks like Eduardo is just going to be able to focus on this Venusaur. Yeah, the Venusaur is definitely a threat. Uh, being able to pressure with that Leaf Storm to be able to knock out the Tabu Fini. Um, so we are going to see Tapu Fini go for the Dynamax here and just try to get out as much damage as possible. Incineroar will be trying to fake out that Venusaur just to be able to keep it from moving for this turn. And hopefully the damage that Tapu Fini is going to be dishing out here is going to be enough to get the knockout. It's going to have to put an absolute shift in to try and really uh, get the knockout here, particularly with the options available in its move pool. But Venusaur is being handled very, very nicely. Yeah, well, here is the Max Starfall, and that is going to be enough to secure the knockout. So David no longer has that Venusaur at their disposal to be able to use for this match. And there goes the synergy that Torkoal and Venusaur did have at the very beginning. you got to get rid of it when you can, and, and Max Star falling there, really nice. Porygon's try attack is going to be a little bit limited. Uh, landing into the Incineroar, not bad, not bad, uh, but not quite enough to really justify uh, losing your Tapu Fini. Uh, as easily as possible. Or losing your, your Venusaur to the Tapu Fini, my apologies. Well, here comes that Thunderous, and this is actually what I was kind of expecting to be in the back here for David. Just going for the Thunderous because of that Defiant ability, and maybe getting into a position where you are... You have your Thunderous on the field when Incineroar switches in. But now that Eduardo knows that it is going to be Thunderous in the back, 
Eduardo can play around that really smartly, knowing that, hey, Incineroar can't just come out onto the field because Thunderous might get that Defiant boost. You've got to be careful with these Thunderous knocking around now. That's been uh, really kind of tough. Obviously, they, they play in an open team sheet format, so they know, but you can't be giving boosts over free of charge. It's just not, not going to fly when there's a Thunderous on the field. Uh, that said, even with the Protect, Thunderous is going to take damage this turn, and that's something this Tapufini knows it needs to do in these remaining turns. Yeah, well, especially during the Dynamax turns, knowing that the secondary effect of that Max Geyser is going to be setting the rain, I think that's really important to just set up Sapufini for success outside of Dynamax. Make sure that you're able to just deal more damage from Muddy Water. That's going to be absolutely key. Um, of course, there is options to change the weather, mm -hmm. uh, which could be a little bit problematic. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, this Tapufini's got one more turn of Dynamax, and if Eduardo can use it, he's going to really show why Tapufini is one of the most used Pokemon in the metagame right now. I feel like this is a really good position for maybe just to try to either knock out the Thunderous here so that Incineroar can make those switches a little bit more safely, or just see whether or not this Torkoal does switch in for one of the slots. But Wild Charge comes out first, and ooh, Tapufini barely hangs on from that. Tapufini taking that. Being able to stick around, Thunder is taking a huge amount of damage from both Recoil and the Life Orb. Uh, I think if the knockout was there, it would have been a very, very different game. But now landing that Max Geyser in return, uh, David's certainly up against it. Yeah, Zinnerar is going to go for Darkest Lariat here into the Porygon 2 that is still sitting on the field, but that's not very much damage, and Porygon 2 can still fire back yet another try attack. We saw how little damage that did last time, so Incineroar able to hang on and now also is able to restore that health using one of those Pinch Berries. Pretty sure Incineroar is back to uh, where it was or above at the beginning of the turn, being able to recover with that berry very, very nicely. And now in this very kind of awkward situation for uh, David, you know, it, it's it's a lot riding on the Torkoal. We've seen that there's not much damage coming out from this Porygon anymore. Uh, there's no real way to boost it. Yes, it gets control of the weather with Drought from the Torkoal, uh, but you know, Torkoal is still going to struggle to to fire back efficiently against something like Incineroar. Uh, a lot riding on this pairing for David as Eduardo, um, you know, maybe wants to reposition a little bit and, and show off his fourth Pokemon, if it's a Pokemon that will guarantee to win in the game. Or you could just kind of, you know, save that information for a little bit later as Tapufini is going to stay on the field, use that Moon Blast into Porygon 2, takes it to about a quarter of its Health and a Flare Blitz now in the sun is going to be enough to be able to knock out that Porygon 2, finally, off the field. It's always a gamble when you set up the sun and your opponent's got something like Incineroar that's able to capitalize on that and get a boost to a big damage move like Flare Blitz. Does mean that that Porygon 2 is taken out of play. The Tapu Fini is finally knocked out, though, by uh, David. Uh, is going to be helpful. Uh, certainly bringing that Pokemon count a little bit closer, but you're still playing against three with just one Torkoal. And while it is a very powerful Pokemon, I'm not sure if it's going to be able to sweep through all three. Uh, that said, Dusclops has already taken a good bit of damage. Uh, Incineroar is looking a little bit low, so uh, there's, there's an option to try and go back there. But Incineroar will guarantee get to move first, and then the Dusclops can kind of set the tempo for itself, depending, of course, what Eduardo has in the back. Well, we saw that it was going to be the Glass Drear in the back, and that's a really scary Pokemon to have in the face of a Torkoal. Uh, but Dusclops in this position could potentially go for something like a Trick Room in case, you know, Incineroar isn't able to do enough damage to the Torkoal there, and then bring in the Dusclops. But I really wonder how speed interacts between that Torkoal and that Glass Drear. I'll be curious to see. It's a matchup that I didn't really think too much about coming into it, because you think one person just wouldn't bring... You wouldn't bring the Glass Drear against the Torkoal, and that's uh, going to be something that... Eduardo kind of holds the cards in that one, knowing uh, how fast or slow his Glastria is uh, and being able to play around that one. So based on the fact he's gone for Pain Split here, he's probably just banking on his Glastria being slightly faster uh, than the ever slow Torkoal uh, and, and just being able to kind of tidy up uh, towards the end of this game. So uh, really kind of diving into these players' game knowledge and the knowledge of team building and mm -hmm. all of the hard work that goes in before we even get to the tournament. 
Yeah, absolutely. Let's see how this, you know, potentially final turn is going to play out here. Uh, Torkoal has been able to dish out a lot of damage coming through with those heat waves. So Dusclops is definitely not in a position where it can feel super safe. But I also really wonder how much damage that's going to do the, to that Glass Drear as well. We already saw that it was the Life Orb equipped, not the Weakness Policy. So even if Glass Drear is able to hang on, it's not going to get that Weakness Policy boost that we normally see on a Pokemon like Glass Drear. No, it's uh, something that people have been debating. Again, it's a, a new Pokemon available to us, and it's been curious to see people make that decision. Torkoal does get to move first, though, and that's a huge amount of damage going down on both. <sighs> not enough for the knockouts, though. No, so that is going to be Glass Drear able to fire back with a final attack, and David's Torkoal goes down. That is going to mean that Eduardo takes this game number one. Let's jump into game number two and see what adaptations do take place for both of these players, if any. We are going to see Venusaur and Torkoal lead once again here. So now it's all about whether or not Eduardo is really going to use that same kind of fake out pressure and how David decides to respond to that because it's the same leads for both of these players. Identical leads to game number one. And I'm curious to see if we get identical moves coming out fake out trick room that was really good for eduardo he managed to get himself in a great position but you know he already knows that torkoal may be the dynamax candidate may be able to to apply some pressure and maybe if there's an option for david to call that switch in to something like the tapu fini and deal damage on that turn he, he could be in a really good position here uh, that said i mean torkoal just immediately uh, going for eruption getting a lot of damage down yeah, well, Dusclops is still going to be able to hang on, though, through all of that damage and get the Trick Room off. So definitely setting up for some of the Pokemon that might be in the back, but also reducing the advantage that that Venusaur did have with that Chlorophyll ability and its speed. Again, after turn one, the Venusaur is just in a really, really bad position and not able to do exactly what it, it usually wants to be able to do, which is move first and either like, sleep powder or fire off big attacks. So really tough decisions to make if you're if you're david and, and we do see him going back to the same thing we saw in game number one where it, it's just got to leave the field it, it just can't mm -hmm. play the game well venusaur is leaving the field and porygon 2 is coming back in its place to take the pain split coming out from dusclops but porygon 2 might not be the right target right now as we do see the body press come out from Torkoal into Incineroar, but that does put Incineroar in range once again to be able to restore health using its Figgy Berry. This is a lot more damage going down earlier than it was in previous turns, though. If you remember, mm -hmm. this kind of point in game number one, the damage wasn't quite there on something like Incineroar before it parting shot out. So uh, getting that berry activated earlier could be signs of something really good for David, something he's able to, to play around a little bit later, and unsurprisingly, Tabifini comes back in for him here. I'd be curious to see if, if Eduardo tries to weave in another Calm Mind as well. I think that would be really, really mm -hmm. big if he could, especially against these two very prevalent special attackers. And I also wonder if, you know, Eduardo does decide to maybe go for either just a Muddy Water here to get off some damage or, you know, could, yeah, absolutely go for the Calm Mind setup um, and just see whether or not they are able to kind of get that up in the face of this Torkoal. Uh, Torkoal right now is still sitting in a pretty favorable position here, but is going to leave the field now, knowing that Venusaur could come back in in its place. Torkoal trying to find that position, I think, late game where it maybe might not be in a great offensive position in that turn, but is able to then switch and set up for the Venusaur when Trick Room's over and done with. So very kind of wise play there. Uh, and Porygon 2 doing what Porygon 2 does and just uh, throwing out those try attacks. <laughs> well, Tapu Fini takes that one pretty handedly and will be able to go for the Calm Mind boost in exponentially increasing its special defense as well as its attack. So I think that's actually going to be a really, really great position for this Tapu Fini to be in because it made a great Dynamax candidate last time. But I feel as though Eduardo was recognizing David right now is not really going for the Dynamax just yet and could save it for later. But what's this? David is going to be going for that Dynamax right now. And we will see a Pokemon get that Dynamax factor, which will be that Venusaur. Look at that Gigantamax. I like it. I really like Gigantamax Venusaur. I think this is kind of the change he needs. He's going to be able to withstand a little more damage just because of the, the pure boost to health as well. So really able to 
maybe get rid of this Tapu Fini a little bit easier than it was in previous games. Uh, the Tapu Fini leaving the Venusaur alone right now, and oh, this is why you bring the Venusaur to, to cause chaos with its G-Max move. Yes, GMAX Vine Lash is such a great move to use here, as just because it's able to do that chip damage at the end of the turn. But here's the other thing that we uh, just saw. One of your favorite things, Adam, Re Trick Room getting reversed by Trick Room. <laughs> Yeah, a classic since 2011 for me. Something that I've always thought is, is great. And in this matchup, it's very important. You have the sun up, you have your Venusaur in, which is Gigantamaxed, and you want to be able to take advantage of that. So instead of waiting and playing out the game later, I, I like this upping the tempo from David and saying, well, no, I'm, I'm actually going to play the speedy Venusaur mode. After you set up the Trick Room, this Dusclops is very, very low, very able to get knocked out. And we call it chip damage. I really don't think that G-Max Vine Lash can be considered chip damage between turns it's a huge <laughs> it is a lot. chunk uh, <laughs> every single turn and it just makes these pokemon on eduardo's side you know these bulky pokemon that he's been playing around tapu fini dusclops incineroar it just makes them a little bit easier to knock out and i think that's gonna be absolutely key in some cases you've just learned a super effective hit with it and just get an easy knockout that way anyway yeah, well, the other thing about G-Max Vine Lash, it's super effective against Tapu Fini. So now that that Tapu Fini is off the field, <laughs> Trick Room comes back again, maybe setting up for the Trick Room that Dusclops is going to use. <laughs> yeah, this is a really nice play. I enjoy this one so much when players pull it off. They predict the Trick Room. This is a horrible mind game to be caught in. But you, you want the Trick Room for yourself, but you also want to bluff and let your opponent set it up. And so really well done there by David to say, no, you, you are actually that reliant on the Trick Room that you don't have a choice but to set it up. That's There isn't another option for you. You need Trick Room for your team to function. I've seen it. It's Incineroar, your kind of big Pokemon that can can deal the damage at Tapu Fini and Glastrier. Glastrier in particular is, is definitely going to need it at some point. So mm -hmm. uh, really kind of wise of him to to read into that and go, well, I think he's just going to trick room immediately. He then trick rooms with his Porygon too, and Dusclops, unfortunately, when it trick rooms, is reversing it and setting it back to the, the normal order uh, that we used to pre-trick room. So it is this Venusaur's last turn of Gigantamax. Uh, a lot that it wants to do and, and try and get some more damage down. I think that's all you can ask for, really, as not going to be Tapu Fini Dynamaxing this turn. It's going to be a little bit different. No, it is going to be a little bit different. And that's because this Glass Drear is set up in a position where it definitely doesn't want to take too much damage. So that health increase is going to be super beneficial here, but also you're able to get out some really great max moves, especially when we saw that it was going to be that max quake coming through. That is going to be really helpful in setting up for that special defense. But Dusclops did try to go for the Trick Room here. Won't be able to this time because that G-Max Vine Lash is plenty to knock out that Dusclops. Getting rid of that Dusclops very, very wise there, meaning the Trick Room is done. Uh, reversing it last turn, one way to deal with it, just knocking out the Trick Room setter, another way to do it in that follow-up turn. So this Glass Tree isn't going to be able to play any portion of the game in Trick Room, but without that, it still does monstrous amounts of damage, and that's going to be enough to tidy up this Venusaur. Yeah, and that special defense boost can be so important when you're taking a look at Torkoal as well as Porygon 2 on David's team. And not to mention, with that knockout, Chilling Nay is going to activate, so that's extra, extra damage now coming out from Eduardo's Glastrier. Yeah, as Eduardo does just rely so heavily on Glastrier, I think, in, in this one. Uh, he's got one turn of really great support with Incineroar coming in to maybe fake out something. Uh, but at the same time, uh, oh. this is going to get oof, a little bit dicey, I think it's fair to say. Yes. Oh, uh, this is what I was afraid of. The the thunderous now coming in, David knowing and recognizing that Incineroar was the last Pokemon on the field. So what better to bring in the thunderous and get that Defiant boost? He held the thunderous so well to late and this Defiant boost does make this thunderous very, very scary. Uh, obviously, in previous years, thunderous has been played differently, but with the ever prevalent use of Intimidate now and access to Defiant, why not, right? You, you mm -hmm. can deal just as much damage with those attacks than you, you could with the special attacks anyway. So uh, could apply a lot more pressure than we've seen from Thunderous in previous years. It, it has on and off years, uh, and I've got a feeling this year is definitely going to be an on year for Thunderous. 
definitely has had some standout performances already and David really, really showing us how it's done with that Thunderous. But now we're going to go ahead and see Incineroar go for the fake out onto Porygon 2. So Porygon 2 not able to move for this turn, but Thunderous will go for the wild charge. And wow, Incineroar gets knocked out just like that. And Cinero dealt with uh, very, very handily there. Uh, obviously, the recoil coming through makes Thunderous uh, a very tempting target. Porygon 2 not able to do anything. Uh, but Gorastria is going to be able to fight back. Let's not rule that out. Um, and we could be in for kind of a slow one to end this game as we've got Glastria versus Porygon. Uh, that said, this Glastria is going to get uh, another chilling Nay boost. And this Porygon looking up against it for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I think that's a really, really difficult position to be in. And we also saw just the fact that we still have a couple, you know, we have that turn of Dynamax that's left here and the G-Max Vine Lash is still doing damage. So we'll have to see how this goes, but Porygon 2 still able to hit recover here. And that could definitely mean a very slow game for the end of this game. Now, Porygon 2 is going to be in a, an interesting position where it wants to kind of control the game uh, as best it can. As you mentioned, those recovers are going to be huge, but they become a, a whole lot harder to use effectively when Chilling Nay has been activated twice and the attack is just mm -hmm. overwhelming. Uh, that said, Torkoal's still in play, and with one more turn of Dynamax, you've got to hope that it can hang on and, and return with a knockout, because right now, Drought is in play, uh, taking away that Hailstorm that was just set up by this uh, Glastrier, and you're going to need to to use something like the eruption just to, to try and deal with it as, as best possible. Yeah, but we also saw how the speed interactions worked last time where that Torkoal is just faster. So Porygon 2 going for a try attack here now, knowing that it shouldn't go for the Trick Room mm -hmm. and this eruption, ooh, that's gonna be enough here. David, evening up the score and we're bringing this match to a 1-1. We're going to a game number three. Well, let's jump into that game number three and see how this series ends between Eduardo Junipero Ferreras and David Kotesh. We are going to see the Venusaur and the Torkoal once again. And would it surprise you, Adam, to see the Incineroar and the Dusclops as well coming out for Eduardo? Doesn't surprise me that we're seeing the same leads this time around for game number three. No, absolutely not. I think both trainers have, have found success with this lead and really want to capitalize on it and, and play it perfectly in game three to, to take the win uh, where they can. So I would be shocked to maybe see the same turn order from Eduardo that we've seen in, in games one and two. It obviously worked once, another mm -hmm. time didn't quite work out. Um, but, you know, he's, he's committing the fake out in the same slot. Um, you have to wonder what David's going to do in response to that. Well, it's eruption again, so <laughs> we are going to see yet another huge chunk of damage come out onto both Incineroar and Dusclops in this turn one of game number three, as we did in game number two. But now this is where things get different. This is where they varied between game number one and game number two. It was how David decided to respond. Knowing that the Trick Room is up right now, this does put Venusaur in a very tricky position. So does David go ahead and remove that Venusaur from the field again? And is this the right call from Eduardo going after this Torkoal? The Torkoal does cause problems. And if Glastria is going to be the focal point of the end of his team, then yes, he needs to, to be kind of wise about it. And and just play around it a little bit better. So really got to look out for himself there as, uh, you know, Dusclops uh, looks like it could be just taking all of the uh, pressure away from the Venusaur by just double targeting into this uh, Torkoal. Yeah, which protected. So neither the pain split nor the parting shot are going to be able to go. And when the parting shot fails, that means Incineroar is sticking around on the field. So it's going to take that sleep powder from Venusaur. That is a huge leg up for David right now. Double targeting into a Protect is one of the most galling turns to go through because you know as soon as that you see Protect, you have to watch the turn play out knowing you've made a mistake. And it's going to be a tough one to bounce back from, right? You, you're really going to struggle to to swing momentum back. Uh, now you're in Cinderella's asleep, you can't parting shots, so the, the Torkoal is still going to be doing uh, damage based off eruption at, at full health here as well. Uh, and, you, you know, you're really kind of limited in your answers to Venusaur now. Um, because you're in Cinderella's asleep and you can't take advantage of the sun with a flare blitz of your own. Ooh, just in the nick of time there, we are going to see those commands come through as it is going to be Tapafini now coming back into the field uh, for Incineroar, which is going to just go take a short nap and be back a little bit later. 
but that is going to be Misty Surge now changing the terrain on the field as Dusclops goes for a paint split into the Torkoal to be able to restore some of its health and just do a little bit of damage to that Torkoal. It's a good amount of damage to land on the Torkoal, uh, but it does get to retaliate with a good amount of damage of its own with a lovely heat wave and a critical hit landing there on to the Dusclops. And there we see where the Tapu Fini switch in was so important, those sleep powders no longer a factor. Yeah, that Misty Terrain going to be able to stop that Sleep Powder from being able to put those grounded Pokemon to sleep as Incineroar now may be coming, making another appearance onto the field, but we'll have to wait and see about that one. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity here for Eduardo to go for, for some damage. I think he needs to, I think. If he doesn't get damage down now, uh, particularly with the Venusaur looking at him, it could get a little bit troublesome to say, well, I, I need to, to kind of find that advantage and... If he doesn't do that, then it's going to be an interesting one. The Porygon 2 Switch, I really, really like here. Uh, this, of course, is a Pokemon that is going to be notoriously difficult, I think, for Eduardo to take out with the combination of his team. Yeah, Porygon 2 has definitely been a standout just because these games have gone a little bit longer, which means that Porygon 2 really thrives in that kind of scenario. But Muddy Water comes through, barely doing any damage to either Porygon 2 or that Venusaur with the sun up. So Sludge Bomb able to fire back, and that brings Tapu Fini very, very low. Tapu Fini just clinging on there from the Sludge Bomb. Uh, of course, its leftovers are going to help out a little bit here, but there's really no great answer to this Venusaur on the field right now. It's just sitting in a good position, it's able to deal damage. And Dusclops damage output with the pain split is, is it's okay, but it's not exactly where you need it to be for this Dusclops to be a, a huge threat. So right now, Stabu Fini's doing what it can, but only muddy watering, probably not as much damage as Eduardo needs to to clear the way for something like his Glastria, particularly if those muddy waters aren't heading in to the Torkoal. Yeah, and especially because now Torkoal is in the back for David, it's going to be preserved knowing that that Glastrier is probably part of Eduardo's game plan this time around as it has been for games number one and game number two. But it's time for David to let that Gigantamax shine. Uh, or maybe even the Dynamax here. It could be either one. But yes, it is going to be Venusaur taking that Gigantamax factor as it was able to dish out huge damage before. And since it's able to go really fast here, it's going to be a lot of damage coming Eduardo's way. It's going to be problematic for sure. And you see Dusclops changing out to the Nightshade. Not quite what you want there. Uh, and then really uh, interesting to see how little it does is Tapu Fini uh, not even given the opportunity to go this turn. Porygon 2 taking advantage of the Trick Room, wrapping it up with the uh, Tri Attack there and Dusclops. Oof, it's got to hurt. Oof, uh, yeah, I, the harsh sunlight's gonna fade here at the end of the turn. So Torkoal, though, still in the back, could be able to come back in and reset it. But Dusclops is barely able to hang on. It might be able to set up yet another Trick Room, but this is a really interesting position for Eduardo to be in, just because you're kind of forced either to bring in a sleeping Incineroar, or you've got to try to make whatever you can work with this Glastrier. The Glastria kind of has to come in to put pressure on the Venusaur, right? The Venusaur isn't going anywhere with Nightshades and Pain Splits and such. So uh, it's going to be a lot riding on this Glastria, but this is the turn where you're out of Trick Room. And we've seen what happens when Glastria isn't in a Trick Room here. It's just not able to apply the same pressure it needs. Duskops knows it's going to fall to the Genox Vine Lash at the end of the turn. Uh, so just kind of trying to find some kind of advantage here. Uh, Intimidate's not going to be able to carve out that big an advantage, though, as these... This Pokemon don't rely on their physical attack stat. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time to also see the Dynamax on Eduardo's side. And it shouldn't surprise you that it is going to be Glastrier with that massive attack stat, hoping to be able to withstand some of these attacks coming in from David's side of the field and then be able to dish out some big damage of its own and potentially get that chilling nay boost to just really snowball the rest of this game. But Max Ooze coming out here from Venusaur right into the Incineroar uh, doesn't do too much damage just because of the power of the move, but the most important part is that Venusaur's special attack and Porygon 2's special attack are going to rise. Getting the boost on Porygon 2 is, is really helpful here, particularly if you're trying to wrap up a game with Porygon 2. And if that's the last thing your Venusaur is going to get to do, do you know what? You did your part, Venusaur. Uh, you put in some good work and, and tried your bestest. Uh, and that's that's all that could be asked for in these turns. So uh, Hail does get set up by the Max Hailstorm, a knockout heading towards that Gigantamax Venusaur as well. Uh, but 
you know, the Glastria is still going to be the focal point. And as we saw in the previous game, Glastria is going to have to go up against Torkoal without the current ability to play in the Trick Room. Uh, and as soon as something like that Dust Tops comes back in, it's just going to be easily knocked out because it's so low on health. Right. Even if Dustclops is trying to go for the, the Trick Room, it's going to get knocked out to something like the G-Max Vine Lash, which is still going to be active on the field, despite Venusaur not being on the field any longer. So let's see what David decides to do here. Has an opportunity to switch into Pokemon, and it is going to be Torkoal now, recognizing that Torkoal is going to be faster than that Glastrier. It's in a really good position. It's going to get control of the weather. Uh, the Glastrier has taken good amount of damage too. You know, the combination of Tri-Attack, the Vine Lash as well, working between uh, every single turn, puts it about the same range it was in, at the end of last game, where Glastria was just double targeted and, and able to, to try and fight back. Incineroar does look for a fake out, but of course that sleep from earlier means it can't get it. And I think I know what's coming uh, to wrap this one up. Yes, that looks like it is about to wrap this one up for David, where that eruption plus the tri-attack coming in from Porygon 2 is going to be enough to be able to pick up the knockout onto Glastrier before it's able to move again. And with the G-Max Vine Lash still active, that's also Incineroar getting knocked out here. It's just Dusclops, and Dusclops has got to take out three of David's Pokemon. So it looks like this one's going to be wrapped up. Really good set for adaptation and learning, how the set goes. You know, you've got to make sure you mm -hmm. know uh, the exact way that your Glastria and your Dusclop, uh, Dusclop and your Torkoal interact and what you can play around as a part of that. So really nice play, but now Porygon 2 and Torkoal just too threatening for this Dusclops on 11 health that's going to get caught at the end of the...